On July 8th, 2024, Piranha Bytes has officially closed its doors with not being able to find a suitable partner for its next project. In order to honor their final game, it's about time for me to finally tackle the sequel to one of my favorite Piranha Bytes titles with Elix 2. To summarize, Elix was about an alb named Jax who ended up being betrayed by his own people and aims to fight alongside the free people to bring down the big bad known as the hybrid. Personally, I enjoyed the original game's world building and unique take on a post-apocalyptic society. Even though I enjoyed the game from beginning to end, the combat was terribly unbalanced and had various bugs throughout. Still, Elix is a game I can recommend fairly easily, so I decided to take a look at Elix 2. I heard overall mixed things about this one, with many claiming it to be far inferior and less interesting than the first. Either way, I'm pretty excited to finally tackle this one, so let's get to it. So when you start the game, you can choose your difficulty and go from there. In case anyone is curious, I will be playing on the normal difficulty. Things have certainly changed since the ending of Elix 1 where the hybrid was destroyed. Jax, however, warns the other factions of an incoming threat. Despite Jax literally being a hero, the factions have decided to ignore his claims and deal with their own petty conflicts. Just in time, a new alien force known as the Skyans launched their invasion and threatened to destroy the whole world of Magalan. Once again, it is up to Jax to save the world with the help of the other factions. From a macro viewpoint, the plot structure is basically the same as the original, although there are more than enough changes to help the game feel fresh. For one, you no longer need to join a faction. This has been a staple in many Piranha Bytes titles, requiring the player to choose a faction in order to progress the story. Instead of siding with the Berserkers, Clerics, Morcons, Albs, or Outlaws, you can choose to be your own person and forego the standard Piranha Bytes route. While this sounds like an intriguing option, it only really serves to make the game harder than necessary as you won't have access to any of the faction's top tier armor. You'll also not have the ability to do certain faction quests, which will limit you from achieving experience points and certain quest rewards. You can technically still get experience points from combat, but more on that later. Another is that so much has changed from a worldview that it doesn't really feel the same. For example, the outlaws no longer are in control of the fort, forcing them to be holed up in the crater. Many former outlaws have also joined the berserkers in the fort, giving a less refined and less strict view on technology. The clerics themselves are also no longer a major player, as they have lost the fort and are now holding a small outpost trying to recruit anyone to their cause. While exploring this world wasn't as rewarding as the first game, I did enjoy scavenging around, stuffing everything into my bottomless inventory. And I guess we might as well talk about the factions considering their importance in the first game. At first, you can only choose one of three factions, that being the Berserkers, Albs, and Morcons. While the Albs still prioritize efficiency over everything, they now limit the amount of elix their members are allowed to take. While this sounds good in theory, this has caused many of the Albs to act irrationally as they try to deal with their newly discovered emotions. This is the faction I initially went with as it made the most sense for Jack to do, but I eventually pivoted to the clerics once the opportunities arose. For the Morcons, I was very curious about what I should expect. At first glance, they come across as a more violent and psychotic version of the outlaws, worshipping a god who wants nothing more than the satisfaction of violence. I found them to be the least developed initially, but I actually learned something very interesting about them. Without spoiling anything, it was a nice surprise and gave the Morcons a hidden layer of depth. If I ever decide to give this game a second playthrough, I may give the Morcons a try and see what they can provide. So that is a bit of the excellent world building here, but let's move on to the main narrative itself. While you are away in the middle of nowhere, the Sky Ants have arrived and are beginning to take over all of Magalan. During your initial scuffle, you've been bit and lost quite a bit of your strength. Therefore, you're back to square one needing to regain your attribute points as well as learn skills from trainers. For some reason, Piranha Bytes always seems to find a way to make you a weakling, even if you were essentially a demigod in the prior games, Cough Cough the Risen series. If you've played the first game, you'll also notice that no one really looks nor sounds the same. Basically, every returning character has a new voice actor, including Jax himself. I personally missed his unique low voice from the first game, but I understand that he is much more human now, no longer taking Elix. While Jax looks pretty close to his first game, many other characters such as Kaya are nearly unrecognizable. They must have created new assets for every character, but forgot to compare them to the original look. As someone who played the first game and beaten it several times already, it feels like an alternative reality instead of a continuation. It's even more bizarre when a cutscene plays showing footage from the first game and how so many people look different. 
So for the overall plot, I found it to be intriguing enough in the early goings, but really devolves into an anticlimactic ending that leaves so much to be desired. It's the old trick of leaving the game open-ended for a sequel. It's disappointing considering how the first game wrapped many of the main plot threads in a bow, as you were able to choose the ending depending on your choices beforehand. It's even doubly so knowing that an Elix 3 is more than unlikely at this point. Never count your chickens before they hatch. But there is much more to an RPG than its world building and story. For that, it's time to go on some good old questing. As expected for a Piranha Bytes title, the quests here in the early game are excellent with some of the faction quests being some of the best I've experienced in quite a while. Many of the early quests have fun twists and turns to keep me on the edge of my seat. The same applies for the other side quests as well found throughout the world, although I wish the main quests were a bit better. Combat is also another large part of this game and has seen quite a bit of improvements. No longer is it the glitchy mess the first game provided. Melee combat especially feels pretty good, which is what I would recommend you to get used to as you'll be doing most of that in your early game. Instead of focusing on timing to perform a special move, this is more focused on stamina management and opening up enemies for additional attacks. Draining an enemy's secondary meter will cause it to fall for a brief time, allowing you to perform a stronger down attack on it. Despite its simplicity compared to the first game, it's a much needed improvement, especially for all the combat this game provides. For my build in particular, I stuck with shotguns, but occasionally threw down with one-handed weapons and shields. As fun as satisfying the shotgun was, I was a bit disappointed on how the sci-fi weapons were handled this time around. In Elix 1, each ranged weapon had three firing modes to choose from, offering various different effects. Laser and plasma weapons especially benefited the most from this. Now there's only one firing mode, which greatly lowers the versatility of each weapon. Still, I find the combat to be an overall improvement compared to the first. Weapons and loot work a bit different this time around. While advanced armor will still need to be obtained via allying with a faction and purchasing it, most weapons can be found after killing enemies. Most of these picked up weapons would be considered damage, meaning that they will need to be repaired. Similar to the first, you can upgrade weapons at the appropriate bench with the right parts and skills. I would recommend to learn how to craft weapons quickly as you can sell these weapons for some elix. I found the game to be overall much easier than the first, but that was mainly due to how good the companion AI was compared to the first game. Just like in Elix 1, you'll run into various companions to recruit to your cause, including many returning ones such as Kaya and Falk. Falk in particular was one of my favorites since he is equipped with a Warhammer and does an insane amount of damage with each swing. For the companions themselves, there is a mix of quality on how interesting each one was. The companions were never a strong point in the first game, and I feel the same way here. Unfortunately, many of my praises go out the window the deeper you go into this game. Elix 2 is divided up into four chapters, with many of the game's strong points coming in the first two acts. By the time you reach the third, however, is really when the writing and quests fall off a massive cliff. Instead of the unique quests shown earlier with various ways of completing them, you're now thrusted into combat-only quests that only get more tedious with each enemy slain. You'll go from fighting a small pack of wolves to now facing multiple squads of agitators over and over again. With my upgraded double barrel shotgun, it wasn't that difficult, although the sheer number of them made completing each quest a chore. This is a similar issue I saw in Risen, where the latter half of the game focuses way too much on combat outside of what is actually important. Even though I completed the game, I legit got bored at the end, and that is one of the worst positions for any game to be in. It also doesn't help that you can have up to 7 companions with their own set of companion quests that tend to get very repetitive very quickly. Just like in the late game, most involve being taken to some location on the map where you'll need to fight your way through things or pick up some object in the area with a hundred enemies waiting to fire on you. These are all very rewarding in terms of experience points and items you can find, but the structure becomes very tedious not too long into the game. The overall drop in quality is so bizarre to me considering how good Elix 1 was in this regard. It gave you some pretty damn cool set pieces to take part in and was overall fun. From here, it seems like they must have ran out of time or money. Considering they had to shut down within two years probably speaks more in terms of their financial struggles at the time. Elix 1 is stated to have sold about 590,000 on Steam, while Elix 2 is only listed at 177,000. If only they were given more time or a bigger budget, we may have been able to see bigger returns. 
According to HowLongToBeat.com, Elix 2 takes about 37 hours if you only focus on the main quests, which is about 10 more hours than the first game. Since I did quite a bit of side quests as well as various faction quests, my time clocked in about 45 hours. The fact that the time to complete is much longer than the first shows how much bloat and padding Elix 2 has. Sometimes a game can be too short, but this is a prime example of a game being too long. If there were less tedious main combat quests to do, the better paced Elix 2 would be. Overall, I really wish that Elix 2 was the ultimate culmination of what the developers have been able to learn over the past two decades. It's a shame since they had some very interesting quests to participate in, as well as the overall world building continuing to be solid. The combat is also much better than Elix 1, despite some of the oversimplification of mechanics. Unfortunately, the late game drop in quality is a big concern that I wish wasn't so bad. My personal recommendation would be to give Elix 1 a try, and then give Elix to a shot when it's on sale. For Piranha Bytes, rest in peace to a legend, and I hope everyone there is able to land back on their feet. Thank you all for watching, and this is Powerhouse, signing off.